Yo, what is up everybody? Fawful the Great 64 here and welcome to a new discussion video. Today I'm gonna be sitting down to discuss the Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story remake and just give some thoughts and opinions about the game and a few other Mario and Luigi related topics. And also, for the first time on the channel, I have a guest joining me today who also happens to be another dedicated Fawful fan, Fawful's Galaxy. Hello everyone, I'm Fawful's Galaxy. Some of you may have heard of me, most of you probably haven't, but I'll also be discussing the Mario Luigi Bowser's Inside Story remake here, as well as a few other things with Fawful the Great 64. So as we're probably all aware, the Bowser's Inside Story remake just dropped last week, and it's been a blast, honestly, in my opinion. Um, I thought we would sit down and, and Fawful fanboy to Fawful fanboy just talk about the remake. What do you think about it? Overall, I just like how they improved the graphics of the game, kind of took a game that's really nostalgic for a lot of older Nintendo fans and revamped it with really nice visuals, new songs, new mode, Bowser Jr. mode. Yeah. And I just, I really like how they made something new out of something old. Yeah, me too. Like, um, I really think, I really like the Dream Team style. I don't know if I prefer it to the original. Bowser's Inside Story, like, sprite style, but I like both of them, and I remember how excited I was when I first saw Dream Team, just the first reveal of that, and it, I thought those were 3D models at first. Um, so, yeah. it's nice to see, like, my old favorites um, in that style. Even though I know they're not models, I still look at, I, I can look at that Fawful sprite from a distance, I'm like, oh, that's a, that looks looks almost 3D. It's, it's, it's awesome. I can picture a 3D model in my head. Yeah, and it looks so it looks so much better in comparison. Like I do love the old the old style Mario and Luigi games, but also just seeing the new enhanced style is yeah. really nice to see. Another thing, I think a, a thing that was a kind of an issue with the original Bowser's Inside Story. This is really minor issue, but it's something I didn't even notice it until later. But yeah, Fawful is way too tall. In in yeah. the um. Yeah, he's not supposed to be as tall as Mario, but he he kind of is in the original. <laughs> yeah, like, and also just seeing them get rid of anything else that was hurting the game, just touch up the game in every way. That oh, the mic. Nice. Goodbye. Good riddance, mic. That was like, yeah, that ruined that good. battle. Now that battle's really fun. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm really happy that they got rid of that, because it was such a forced gimmick. Yeah, like... And they also had it used in like the one scene where you have to breathe into Toadly's little thing, and and yeah, now you no. just tap the button instead. Yeah, that's. It was cool that they were trying to do stuff like that, but it was so unnecessary. Yeah. Um. So, the how? Do, what do you think of the music? Do you think which songs um, do you think sound better or worse? I'm a bit on the fence. Some of the like. I really like what they did the Fawful's theme. I like how that sounds. Yeah. I like some. I like some of the main area themes, but at the same time, I kind of like the old music better. As yeah, I think. Um, I don't know. the The new Fawful's theme it sounds really good. I think it sounds a little. It gives sort of a different vibe from the original. Though it's like it's the same, but it's, it seems different. Um, yeah, it's I've not, heard a it's few fan nice. remixes that I thought were more ideal, but yeah. um, but I do like it. Um, in the final or the grand finale, um, yeah. I really like that remix. But yeah. I think there's a fan there's some fan remixes that I still like more, especially one that I think came out after the the remake released. Some Japanese person made that, and that and that just sounded whoa whoa whoa. But I do like the in game version as well. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's bad, but I think it's not the best. Yeah, um, but I one one music I found myself listening to a lot ever since I found out is the Dark Star battle theme. Um, that, yeah. That one kind of sounds like a combination, to me anyway, I don't know if you hear it, but we'll see. Uh, to me anyway, it sounds kind of like a combination of uh, Adventure's End from Dream Team as well as the final battle from Paper Jam. It kind of sounds like it has some of the, a little bit of those vibes in it. In, yeah, of course, nice. with in the final as well in there. Like, yeah, I think that one sounds really cool. Yeah, I agree. That does sound. I I like what they did with it. 
I definitely like what they were, the direction they were trying to go. Yeah, uh, and also the Dark Fawful battle theme. A remix of Cacolet, that's awesome. That, that's awesome. So Cacolet officially is referenced in Bowser's Insight story now. Yeah, that is interesting that they chose to do that. Yeah, because I always thought it was weird that Fawful never mentions Cacoletta at all. Apparently in one of the other language versions he does, but not by name, but like in passing reference. If, are you familiar with that? Um, I think I've heard about that. Was what? it in like a Japanese version? I don't think it was Japanese. I think it may have been German or French. I don't remember which one, but apparently he, had a, he has a line in the, like when he's def defeated, when he's about to blow up. And one of the lines he has oh. in one of the versions is, uh, I played the henchman for a hysteric. When oh, translated. That's yeah, that's that's kind of interesting, I feel. Um, but in the rest of the versions, never men no mention at all. Not even in Partners in Time, you never hear him actually outright mention Kakleta, even though he describes his own role in Superstar Saga. Yeah, he describes what he did, but he really seems to want to move on from what Kakleta did to him. Yeah. Uh, but it, it was cool that they had like that remix uh, for Dark Fawful. I, I'm glad they have unique songs for those two bosses now, because it was really weird seeing just the regular boss theme. Yeah, it was definitely needed. A new song was definitely needed. Yeah, and like, they should have honestly had a new song for the Shrewd fight too, though. Like, you could have had the Partners in Time boss theme. I think they definitely should have done that. But... Uh, that leads into like, is there gonna be a Partners in Time remake? Yeah, I was just, I was just thinking. Yep, yep. Um, what do, do you think about them skipping it? I mean, personally, I do prefer Bowser's Insight Story over Partners in Time, so I wasn't too disappointed. But I was confused as to why they did this one first. But yeah, this, I had similar feelings. Yeah, but this this interview did kind of touch on that. Yeah, why skip there Partners is. in Time? as you remake the Mario & Luigi games, he says the biggest point was that Bowser's Inside Story was the best received in the series, so we wanted to do a remake. Also, they liked Bowser and Bowser Jr. and their relationship. So, I guess that would have been harder to do in Partners in Time. Also, Fawful was already major in Bowser's Inside Story. I'm glad they acknowledge his popularity. I'm glad they acknowledge that. Um, yeah, they, they, they recognize that Fawful is one of their best characters. Yeah, and like... Um, I'm kind of hoping in a potential Partners in Time remake, this is going to sound really far-fetched, but what yeah, if dude. the side mode was about Fawful? <laughs> I that, think... There's definitely room for that there, because, like, he's his own little thing. Yeah, he never does he much. Actually... He never does much, but the thing is, he's not a main villain there. He's He's not a focus of the plot. But he exists, and he's referenced. That that makes me think, oh, they, this could, because, because you know, if they don't have, I do want him in the next game somehow, but if they decide to keep the death permanent, then a potential Partners in Time remake would be his final appearance. Yeah. So I'd and like also, that to count. <laughs> also, think about how they did um, with Bowser Jr. Like, Bowser Jr. is not even in Inside Story. That's why they were able to use I know. So they can totally do that with Fawful. Like, he's down in his shop having some type of side quest. No I, I think, I honestly think that they could explain so many things with that. They could explain what he was doing with those beans. Maybe they kind of tied into how he had some, some, like, weird minions in the next game. Um, yeah. Like, maybe he was creating minions with those beans. Or or maybe he, and, and also how he had the shroob, the shroob ships. His ships in Bowser's Inside Story look look very similar, so maybe he got access to their technology somehow. Yeah, and also how there's one Shroob strip, uh, ship in Inside Story. Yeah, and and, how, and like the the Shroobs that that are in the um the the freezer in Bowser's Inside Story. But I'm pretty sure doesn't the Bowser Jr. remake have a scene about that? Don't spoil it because I haven't really played through that. But like I, I, I'm I pretty have... sure I've heard that it does somewhere, but I don't know. Um, I haven't really played through that either. I've only watched a brief overview of like the beginning of it, but I have no clue how it ends or really yeah. the full story. Well, I've seen what the final boss looks like, but I'm not going to spoil nothing, but I have only watched it in Japanese, so I don't really know what anyone was saying or anything. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, I do also think that they could have an origin story for Midbus uh, in the Partners in Time remake. 
play. That that could be good. Like where Fawful and Midbus meet or something, and they team yeah, up. Yeah, and then they team up, and then they could both be like potential captains, and you could have specific missions for each one, so that way when one is being played as, the other one is managing the shop. Uh, That'd be so, interesting. So that way in the main game, as an added thing, sometimes you would meet Midbus instead of Fawful, depending on where in the store you go to the shop. Yeah, that could, that could work. I'd really like to see something like that. Yeah, cause uh, I I just really think if 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 they're if if they're gonna keep Fawful dead, I don't want them to do that. But like, it feels like something they would do. I want his last appearance to really count and be like a starring role would be awesome, and it would also make him more uh, exposed for like. Uh, oh, oh! If you, if if, this, if you see this game in the store and his name is in the title, you know he's an important character. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um. One thing I'd like to mention about Fawful, real quick. This this little part here. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I have excitement. Yeah. In Dream Team. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think that should be referenced a bit because that was. I don't think that's a mistake. And speaking of which, the next like original game. Um. What what could it, like I don't think they would do Fawful as a starring character in that like because he's like he's still more villain and evil than than really a good guy but yeah I definitely uh, I don't see them making him a good guy I think he'll stay evil for sure yeah but what do you if they have another guest character as like the uh, one of the playable characters who do you think they might use that's interesting because they've used they've used Mario and Luigi. The Babies, Bowser, Paper Mario. Who, who's left, you know? Wario and Waluigi? <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's that's a good point. Yeah, I, I'd really want to see them in an RPG period. They, they haven't really appeared other than like the in Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. They had their colors that you could put on, but that's about it. Yeah, and there was a cut Wario in Superstar Saga, but he wasn't didn't make it into the final game. Yeah, so Wario and Waluigi haven't even been in um, the Mario and Luigi franchise. Before. I feel like they'd fit so much, though. Like, they're already really wacky and expressive, and combining that with the Mario and Luigi sprite style would be epic. <laughs> One thing I think would be interesting if they had Mario and Luigi and Wario and Waluigi in, like, kind of different plots, like they did in Inside Story. Because yeah. Mario, and Wario and Waluigi are kind of bad guys in a way. They're kind of good, kind of bad. So if they had, they kind of flip flop a lot. If they had them interact with Mario and Luigi similar to how they did with Bowser, of course they wouldn't eat them. But something where yeah. you kind of switch between and they're on different quests, but they have the same goal of taking down somebody. Yeah, like I kind of can picture a, a boss battle between them. Like you're Mario and Luigi, you're fighting Wario and Waluigi, and it's kind of like. Uh, a, a rival kind of thing, kind of like how Popple and Rookie had their own bros attacks in Superstar Saga. Yeah, yeah like, like how they they directly kind of mirror you, similar at least. Yeah, I think of, of fighting Wario and Waluigi, but also I, I'd want to be able to play as them, so they would need to be some sort of focus. Um, that would be awesome. Well, you do fight Bowser in Inside Story, but also... Yeah, but um, another that, that reminds me though... They, there was a really missed opportunity to make have a, a Bowser boss fight against Mario and Luigi. Like, you play as Bowser and you're fighting Mario and Luigi. That would be really cool. That would have been... I feel like the reason they didn't do that is because you don't want to fight the true heroes, because Bowser's never totally a true hero, so they might have wanted to stray away from that for those reasons. Yeah, but they could have always like explained it away, oh, they got possessed or something. Yeah, that definitely would have been fun. Because you do fight Mr. L in Super Paper Mario, and you can play True. as Bowser during that, so I think it could could work. But uh, yeah, I agree. That's a missed opportunity. And like we, you mentioned earlier, Paper Mario. I'm, I don't want to get too far into this, but I really think a, a revisit of the paper crossover concept is something that I would really like. But I don't really think it's that likely. Uh, yeah, maybe like they could have a. Paper Mario side mode, something yeah, like the or or things, something like where games. Mario and Luigi go inside the book instead of the opposite. Like, um, well, you could have like an actual more of a combination of the Mario and Luigi Bros Attack uh, battle style 
combined with the Paper Mario battle style, but they, they're, they, they seem so inconsistent on what the Paper Mario battle style is, that might not be, that might be why they didn't do that. Yeah, especially with Color Splash coming in. Yeah. And totally changing. And sticker star with the stickers. Yeah, I, oh god, I, I don't want to talk about those games. I, I would go <laughs> on for hours. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Like, in terms of the next game, now, I, it, I was reminded that I had this really stupid idea years ago. This was before even Dream Team got announced, so this is kind of an old idea. It was kind of for Mario & Luigi RPG 4, and I had seen the yeah. fan-made logo with like, Mario & Waluigi on it. Have you ever seen that? Oh, yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, and, and I, I, of course, made a cringe-worthy box art using it that had Spongebob of all things on it, but, oh god, don't even think about that. Ugh. Um, but, like, that logo, I looked at it and thought, oh, all sorts of ideas. Of course, I, I was coming up with stupid things, like, completely unrelated to Mario characters. Oh, I watched this show, I want to see it, but nah, that's so stupid. Um, yeah. But, um... One th idea I did come up with w was this might have actually been the first time I came up with the idea of the outfit for Fawful that I use as my avatar a lot now. Uh, where Fawful would be a cameo like in Partners in Time again, but slightly a bigger role where he basically hosts the boss rush mode. And that, then he, and then he okay. himself comes in as the secret boss at the end. I think as much as I'd love Fawful to be like the starring villain of the next game, I think that yeah, Nintendo I think there should be a new dreams. villain. Yeah, in, definitely pick as a new the villain. as the main villain of the next game. But uh, that's why I think I, that idea for Fawful being like the hosting the uh, the boss rush mode. The, yeah, speaking I, of I, the boss rush, oh yeah. I I was just gonna say I think Fawful should get a bigger role than he did in Partners in Time, but not a starring villain. Just a yeah, a decent amount more Fawful. Like. Maybe maybe have a game where he kind of does what Popple did in Superstar Saga, show up and want to fight you. Like, yeah, something like that, like a side villain. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, um, and I honestly think if they do bring him back, they don't really have to put much effort into trying to explain how he survived, because it's Mario. We don't really have to think about that too much. And you know yeah, what like, I mean? The amount, time, the amount of times Bowser's fell in lava is uncountable. And he always comes back. And, so. and that's not even the half of it. He's been sucked into a black hole, punched into the sun, all sorts of yeah. things. Yeah, but it's definitely... It's definitely not... Um, there's definitely a chance that Fawful could be alive, according to Nintendo's logic. Yeah. And the Bowser Jr. mode, obviously... Uh, you said you hadn't played much of it. I haven't played much of it, so I don't. We don't really know too much about. I don't. I don't want to really delve into spoilers and stuff, but uh, yeah, because that's a new mode. Every like at this point, if you haven't played Inside Story, you probably shouldn't find out. But like that's been a game for over ten years now. I think. Yeah, I don't think anyone should be worried about spoilers for the main mode, the main game. Yeah. Um, but the Bowser Jr. mode. What are your thoughts on it based on what you've seen? Honestly, I think, and this this is my personal thought also, and what I've heard from the general community, it's good, it's not great, but it has, like, decent story. The gameplay is a bit unsatisfying, but there's yeah. a nice story to go along yeah, with Yeah, I kind of, that's kind of how I felt about Minion Quest, too. Like, the gameplay yeah. really wasn't anything special, but the story was made it interesting. And they're so similar to each other, too. Yeah, although I do think they have improved some of the stuff from, from Minion Quest. Like, it's it's a little more complex, a little more customization you can have in the Bowser Jr. one. Yeah, and this story is a bit more rich, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, especially because, from what I hear, there's some nice interactions between Bowser Jr. and the Koopalings. Um, yeah, as well as the father-son relationship. Yeah, with Bowser. Uh, but... Yeah, and also that they has three new villains. Have you, you've seen them, right? Uh, um, I think I have. Do you yeah, remind they, me? Of well, well, two of them were in the uh, one of the Nintendo Direct trailers, but there's a third one. Uh, they're the the one of them's really tall and lanky and got like sunglasses on. The other one's this oh, little. You yep, know what I'm yep. talking about? Did you see the fat one too? The the one that looks like a slab of meat. <laughs> um, I think I have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically. Uh, yeah. What what do you think about those guys? Do you think they're cool looking? Do you think that they're gonna have like a, a, a neat plot to them? 
I'm excited to see what they do because it's kind of adding new characters into an old story might just give it well not an old story because it's in the Bowser Jr. mode but adding them in might give it a little more like rejuvenation more excitement to see like what these totally brand new characters will do and yeah and I mean I know I have seen a little bit of spoilers about them so I don't really want to talk about that too much but um yeah uh you, you saw the intro right the intro to the mode or no yeah I saw the intro so you saw the part where they kind of reveal that they are working for Fawful? Um, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't think that's really much of a surprise. Even when I first saw them, they kind of looked like they were probably going to be villains, so... Yeah. It's it's kind of... It reminds me a bit... Now, if... Maybe I'm totally off base here, but it kind of reminds me of the villains in Super Paper Mario, kind of how they act. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. I love that game so much, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's Weird, weird designs, and like, they, they kind of did seem like a little motley crew of minions. Yeah, like, um, I forget the names of them, but from Super Paper Mario, like how uh, Dementio has all those... Wait, uh, no, sorry, Black has all his little minions yeah. running around. I, it's so similar. And I yeah, think and they even have like the the big one, like O Chunks. That's that's the name of the the big muscle guy. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, that's in in, in, su in Super Paper Mario. I think the the guy in in um, Bowser Junior's Journey is his his name is just Beef. And I yeah, just totally want to make a joke about that. Oh, Fall maybe Fawful isn't so beefless after all. If he has a minion yeah, named really. Beef. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm excited to see what they do. Uh, so as am I. yeah. Um, I've already I've already heard that the a lot of the things that happen in the Bowser Jr. mode add like small not very not very game changing but small details in in certain things in the main main story that weren't there in the original not they don't change how it, anything plays out but just little details and and then and apparently they were put there by the Bowser Jr. mode <laughs> yeah which is kind of really cool. like not changing the main story, but also adding to it at the same time. And which, clever how which, they did that. which reminds me how much I liked the fact that Minion Quest in the Superstar Saga remake explained things that were just weird in Superstar Saga, like you never knew why they happened, like the Poison Shroom, like how the origins of that. Like you never knew, oh, why is this supposed to uh, super-powered invincibility mushroom supposed to give, make you invincible and it poisons him instead? They explained that in Minion Quest. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, you, really you have like, you have played through that, right? I've played through most of it, not all of it, but yeah. Most. I think I just think it's really cool that they actually explain things that you we we all remember from the original, but give them more depth to them. And also how you find out this this random ass Goomba that that you captured in a barrel all those years back was Captain Goomba the whole time. Yeah, that's that's such a that's such a cool idea that they put into it. Yeah, um, and and I'm I'm excited to see what the, the protagonists from Minion Quest, the, the captains, do in the Bowser Junior mode. They, you've seen a little bit of them in the intro and stuff, but yeah, I guess there's not much more to say about the Bowser Junior mode because we don't really know everything about it. We haven't played through it. Uh, but like out of the main story and stuff, what did you like about that? Like, what was the favorite parts of that? Favorite parts of the new stuff that they added. Or just in the the remastered main story in general, like what? It's kind of probably what we already talked about, but like, what, what's your favorite part of Bowser's Inside Story? I should say. Of the whole game, my favorite part is just Fawful's story as a whole. Yeah, the fact yeah. That, that he came from the origins of being a toady for Cacletta, grinded, yeah. selling beans for who knows why. Maybe we'll know it later, but selling beans then raising an army taking over the Mushroom Kingdom and Bowser's Castle, and getting so close to finally beating the Mario Bros. It's just such a, a interesting story. I totally agree. Um, to add to that a little bit, one of my favorite parts, even more specifically, is the whole segment where you get to Bowser's Castle for the first time, and you see that he's made it into Fawful Theater, and <laughs> you get to watch his show. I love that whole segment where Fawful jumps on stage and is cheering to the crowd, get, getting cheers out of the crowd and stuff. That's just so that's, awesome. That's that's probably my favorite, well, for personal reasons, that's probably my favorite scene in any of the Mario Luigi games. I just have so much nostalgia with it. Oh, yeah. 
What that that does remind me one slightly not really game changing but a slightly disappointing change to that in the remake is that they removed the cage before you fight Midbus. Yeah, I it's odd that they did that. It wasn't really necessary. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but yeah, why? totally not that big of a deal. The really the biggest change I don't like is the fact that all the toads are more generic than they used to be. Uh, that's the only thing yeah. I don't really like. Uh, yeah, they're taking more of the Superstar Saga notes. I mean, uh, no, sorry. They're taking more of the Sticker Star notes yeah. by just having a bunch of generic, not really meaningful characters. Yeah, and it, it reminds me, though, that they added in Dr. Toadly to replace Psycho Kamek in the Superstar Saga remake. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't mind it really, but why? Yeah, why? Like, he, he's one of the more unique Toads there now, but, um, like, why not just keep Psycho Kamek and leave the Toads, their original designs, just updated? <laughs> yeah, it's... I don't fully understand why they would do some of the things they did, but most of the changes that they made are just minor ones that I don't really mind, so... Yeah, me too, like... Those are just like little nitpicks. I mo I very much care a lot more about the uh, generic Toad designs in the games that actually don't have other characters to make up for it. <laughs> like at least yeah. with at least with these, we still got Fawful. We still got all these characters, Midbus, Cacletta, depending on which game you're we're looking at. Like, you know what I mean? Like that they're yeah. They still got a, a lot of characters, so I don't really mind it as much in these ones. But um, yeah, um, one thing how we were talking about changes that they made in the game. This is a change that, once again, I'm not too hung up about, but this one does kind of bug me. Why did they mirror the giant Bowser battles? Why did they change it? I mean... So you're going from right to yeah, left. Yeah, kind of. Like, I think they did that because of Dream Team. Like, they had the choice in Dream Team, but they didn't even give you the choice to switch it back here. That's the part that bugs me. Uh, although I do feel like it feels better with that direction to me anyway. I got I kind of got used to it in Dream Team, so, but, um, but yeah, it is a little odd that, uh, you have to look at it from the other way. Yeah, I just see it, like, unnecessary, unasked for. Like, it's not some horrible change. I think the option is something that's good to have, but I don't think that they should have just changed it and not even added the option to use the original layout. Yeah, if they would have had the option, then I wouldn't be saying anything. But yeah, not, Dream, Dream Team gives game. you the option as soon as you boot up the game, so I don't know why this one didn't. Yeah, why they would keep that out. Yeah, like, um, and like, one of the changes that I, I, I'm surprised I didn't bring this, well, this isn't really a change, this is a lack of an addition, more like. Um, they added a giant battle arena for Bowser in the remake, but they didn't add a normal battle arena. Oh, that you could go back and fight the previous bosses, you mean? Yeah, like in the gauntlet. Oh, have you yeah, not that's... have you not been there yet, or or? Uh... No, I haven't gotten there yet. No. Oh shit! Well, uh, I... it's, it's fine. I, yeah. I honestly don't care about spoilers that much. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Basically, they they do have. I discovered this playing the Japanese version. Obviously, I couldn't read any of the text, but like. I went to the gauntlet for the first time, and there, and there was two big icons to choose from. One of them was, I think, an, an M and an L or something for Mario and Luigi. The other one was a clear Bowser emblem. I'm like, oh! they added it. But then I went to it, it only had giant battles. It didn't have any of the regular that, battles. That's disappointing, honestly, that they wouldn't add that in. Yeah, especially since they went to the effort to do the giant battles. And I haven't played, I've only played the Bowser Castle X giant battle, I haven't played the others, so I don't know how much they changed. The Bowser's Castle one didn't seem too much more difficult than it is originally, which it's like not difficult at all, it's the first one. Uh, I think some of the attacks may have been faster, that's the only difference I noticed. Yeah, it's more smooth running, but yeah, it's just interesting that they, it, that they changed that, but I overall like what they did. Yeah, um, and the but I do think also the giant battles animations with the, when they made it 3D, they look a lot stiffer than the giant battles from Dream Team. Uh, yeah, I think it's because they had a different company that they outsourced them to in this one. They had I think Arzest. I don't oh. I don't know too much about. I think I heard they did a Yoshi game or something. Uh, but in Dream Team, it was Good Feel that did the giant battles. So they, they, someone different made the giant battles in this one. 
versus Dream Team. Yeah, I mean, are you saying they overall weren't as nice to play in? Oh, the, the gameplay was fine. It was perfect. It, it felt nice and smooth. I'm just talking about the the, the visual animations. Like Bowser's, some oh. of the animations felt a little stiff. Like they weren't. Okay. They like he he didn't have enough bones that bounce back from the when he punches and stuff. Like he felt felt a little stiff. You know what I mean? Yeah. But also, in in defense of them, this game was. I wouldn't say rushed, but it came out pretty quickly after the Superstar Saga remake. Yeah, especially like I, w I was. It's kind of it's kind of weird because um. Like. They announced it a lot earlier than it released, I think. Well, no, actually, though. They, it released, actually, a little bit earlier than I thought it would. When they said 2019, um, I thought... I didn't realize it meant, like, January. But, yeah, I thought it was going to be later 2019. Yeah, they definitely, like... They definitely got it out a lot sooner than it's, it's, it's cool, because what, what's cool about that, the release date to me, though, is it came out a day after my birthday, so that was a nice oh, really? little... Uh, day belated birthday present. Yeah, the yeah, first that's, that's that's why on the first stream I started a few hours earlier and played Super Mario Maker up till midnight to get the game um, because it was my birthday. That's why I wanted to it, it lined up, so I wanted to do it that way. Yeah, oh, that's cool though. Yeah, uh, so I was really I'm there and but a select this has nothing to do with Mario and Luigi, but it's on my mind. I'll just throw it out there real quick, like. I also heard yep. a rumor that there was going to be a Nintendo Direct on my birthday, and I'm, I got I got a little too believing of that, and it didn't happen, but... Yeah, uh, I did hear some rumors about a Nintendo Direct coming out in the next, like, week or so, or I heard. Yeah, sure I don't know. I don't know what to believe in terms of Direct leaks anymore. There, there's so many fake ones. Yeah, uh, and I feel like there's always supposed to be a Nintendo Direct in the next week anyway, so... Yeah. Like, supposedly. So yeah, the, what else about like this interview do you think would is is interesting? I guess they they talked about Mario Odyssey a little bit and 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 stuff like that. I think that's an interesting side note. I don't think it means that much, like how they were saying you are technically inside Bowser, but it, it's cool. It's a cool, cool idea to think about how they're the same. Could you scroll up a little bit? There was one. Um, there, it, uh, Alpha Dreams last 3DS game. Yeah, uh, they don't know if it's the last 3DS game. I don't know if that means they're just trying to hide something or if they j actually don't know. But, um, it, exactly. you would think if they were making a Partners in Time remake, you'd think they would have started on it by now, right? Yeah, I'd imagine they would be on the 3DS for that, too. But does yeah. this mean they're switching? But I do think Partners in Time would be easier to make work on the Switch than Bowser's Inside Story, because there's much less, um, touchscreen stuff and, and, like, because we already saw with the Superstar Saga remake, they can make the screen zoom in and out, so anything that needs more battlefield, they can zoom out for. Uh, yeah. So Are I think really it could work. Like, yeah. yeah, I really wonder if they'll be going over to the Switch for new games. I also and wonder. New games. I also wonder if the Mario and Luigi series was on the Switch, what would it look like? Would it be like just more HD versions of the sprites in the 3DS games, or would they actually have models? Because Alpha Dream d isn't really big on models, so... I would kind of want them to keep the same art style that they have now if they went to the Switch. Yeah, it would just be a lot harder to... It would take a lot longer, I guess, to make the assets. Because if they were all HD and stuff. Because I, I, I remember, like... Hold on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to look this up. I made this a couple years ago, and I basically traced over the sprite, uh, that sprite from the game, but I made it, like, HD. If they yeah. made a hey game with that art style... Uh, obviously a lot more polished than what I did. I kind of had a lot of rough edges in that, but... Um, if they made a game with that art style, how long do you think it would take to make each each frame of each sprite? That would be... That would be too much, honestly. To make yeah. all the frames for that. Yeah, that's why I'm wondering if there's like a middle ground they could do to where it would still look good on the Switch. I think they should take like the Dream Team Paper Jam style and just kind of improve it a little bit, still keep the pixel art to it, but just increase it a little bit. But just make it so it doesn't... Quality. Yeah, just make it so it so it doesn't look like scaled up sprites at the same resolution on the 3DS. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the, the 
I, I can kind of understand also the stereoscopic 3D thing, because they didn't they wanted to keep the maps 2D, so it, that it would be very weird to use stereoscopic 3D with a 2D map. That wouldn't work yeah. at all. Yeah, I mean it'd be interesting if they tried to go more 3D, but I don't personally think that they should. At least not yet. Yeah, I, although to be fair, I have always wanted to see like the, uh, to see like a full all the all the Bean Bean Kingdom areas with 3D models. That would be amazing. Yeah, it's. I I honestly don't know what I want. Like maybe if they made a smaller game. Like, like I kind of um, I kind of think that they they should like have keep doing the Mario and Luigi series with the pixel art and and because they're really good at that. But I just want to see some content from, from those games in other Mario games to see how they look in the general Mario art style, like 3D and, and everything. Yeah, like, if they had, like, one thing I'd really want to see is, like, maybe a couple Thoughtful cameos in games, like, put them in Smash. I know there was... Thoughtful technically is in Smash. Yeah, they have, they have the spirit. spirit. Yeah. But, well, like, but maybe, like, I mean, that's just a pasted artwork. That's not a model or anything. Yeah, it's... I'd want to see him in more 3D games, not as oh, a big yeah. role or anything, but just to like, as a playable character in Mario Kart. Or something yes, like yes, that. exactly. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I I campaigned so hard for that in uh, I don't tw remember. back in back in 2013. It it was a while ago, but I I got to the point where people started actively not liking me because I was being very annoying with it. <laughs> like that, like that, that's weird though. The the dedicated communities for other Mario games like Mario Kart, they seem to just be completely convinced that RPG stuff is never happening. And and they're not, they won't hesitate to tell you that. And so whenever I'm like, you know, it can happen, it can happen, we can make it happen, they were not very enthusiastic. Yeah, it's... I think something like Smash would be way more likely, although, clearly, he wasn't... Yeah, at least there is dis active discussion for Smash. It feels weird, though, that they never have discussions like that for games like Mario Kart, because they do have more of a focus in the Mario universe. Whereas yes. Smash, you have a bunch of franchises to, uh, to to consider. Smash pulls from everything Nintendo's, like, ever touched, pretty much. Yeah, they, 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 Smash, they, there's even a spirit from the guy from Tomato Adventure in Smash. The guy from what? Tomato Adventure, the first game, the previous game before Superstar Saga that Alpha Dream made, it was Japan oh. only. Oh, yeah, yeah. They had that guy in, in as a spirit in Smash. Yeah, I think Mario Kart is definitely a possibility for them to put Fawful in, maybe in yeah, Mario there, Kart. There is, a, there is a mod. Did you see the, the, the Mario Kart, the, the mod yeah. for Mar Fawful in Mario Kart and for in Smash Bros? Yeah, I, I, I saw I love that. Like I saw the Mario Kart one. Uh, did you see the Smash one? Because that's where that model actually originated from. Yeah, I've seen that. That looks really nice. Yeah. I'm... Like, that model is just top-notch quality. Yeah, and imagine, like, some real Nintendo employees working on it. Like, they could, actually, they could actually add physics to his cape and make it, like, flap around and stuff. That would be awesome. I'd, I'd love to see that. Although it would be a little weird to try to fit try to give him poses like in a cart and on a bike and stuff and, and, and make the cape not clash. So they might be better off giving him that, that pink outfit from, from the Superstar Saga. <laughs> yeah, or they could even have maybe as like Final Smash, like a Dark Fawful. Oh yeah, yeah, like uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping if he's in Smash Bros, like they, they use, um, they have a lot of references in like the moveset and in the um, the final smash with Dark Fawful, but they could also have uh, Kakletta show up as a cameo during during a final smash or something like that, or as an yeah. assist trophy or something. Um, or the Dark Star too. Yeah, the Dark. Uh, the definitely, if if his final smash is Dark Star related, they should have the Dark Star be there and transform into Dark Bowser. That would be so cool. I'd love to see. Yeah. That. Um, <laughs> it would al al almost be like they could pay. They could. Take a page from Bowser's final smash with Giga Bowser. And they could have Dark Bowser come up in the background and punch opponents, but Fawful would be, get to also be doing something. You know what I yeah. mean? Like that—that that would be amazing. Or even like it, make him turn into the Fawful Bug and get big and, and and like start shooting beams and stuff. That that'd be interesting, especially 3D. Oh yeah. 
Like, honestly, to see that in th I, now I'm starting to actually understand why they might not have made that a model. But, have you beaten the, the main story in the, in the remake? For, uh, Inside Story? Yeah. Um, I've watched through Let's Plays of it. So you've seen the final boss, right? Yeah. Okay, so you know that the Fawful Bug, they didn't make it into a model? Like they did with yeah. Kakletta in, in the Superstar Saga remake? Yeah, I've got to see why they didn't do that, but I'm, I'm on the other hand, I'm a little disappointed because that would have been a fully 3D model Fawful Head. They did have the Fawful Express, but that was a little lower quality and it was only the front of the face, I guess. Yeah, it was it was disappointing that they didn't fully go through making a 3D model, but it still looks good in my opinion. Yeah, it does look really good, and, and honestly, it might be a little hard to pull off the Dark Fawful Bug, Dark Star Core in 3D and not make it look terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Because it's um, definitely, like, an intimidating foe. Yeah, definitely. But, like, these other choices they picked for Smash, not really feeling them. Uh, yeah, some <laughs> Like, Starlo, Brock, Madame, those are just the weirdest choices, in my opinion. If if it's, if it's for some reason they don't want Fawful, like, why would you not want Fawful? Fawful's, like, the most iconic character that debuted in that series. It should be yeah. Fawful if anyone. But if they like already added Fawful and they want another Mario and Luigi character for some reason, I would still go for like Antasma or something. Not not one of those. <laughs> yeah, I mean like Starlo's popular, but what would she really do? Like maybe as an assist to Peach, like Aluma is to Rosalina, something like that. Maybe? I think if Starlo was in there as something other than like a spirit or something, it would be an assist trophy. Um, yeah, I, that that I, could be interesting. Yeah, because, uh, Madame? that's just so random. <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, I know why. Like, what would she do? Does it, all she really does is get hit in the back. <laughs> yeah. She could be, like, a shield or something. Actually, that'd be kind of funny. Like, I think they could have, like, some of these characters as assist trophies. Like, yeah. um, or even, like... They, they did away with regular trophies, which really sucks. I Because I, I was kind of hoping if they kept that, then we could get Fawful as a trophy and have a full model for him. If they didn't want to make him playable or anything like that, or an assist trophy, that that would be a last line of of defense for characters to get new models. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, um... Yeah, been some. Even though those are not rigged or anything, but it would still be a, a good starting point. Uh, but I just, I just want them to use these characters in, in more games. Like... There, there was also a, an idea that I've, I've seen, I've, I had been seen throwing around a little bit that, that I haven't really, that hasn't really, that I doubt is ever happening because I don't think that this in general is going to even be possible to happen. When there was speculation going around about DLC for Mario Odyssey with new kingdoms and stuff, one of the things I, I thought was the Bean Bean Kingdom. Make it, make it a playable kingdom as a DLC yeah. kingdom in Odyssey. That would be really nice to see. Like, I don't think they would do that, but I, I think they should. They should try to break the threshold of putting RPG characters. Yes, in their main yes, game. yes. And and like, <laughs> and and we have a 3D model for Prince Peasley. <laughs> like that would be they, they, some. There's actually been some nice fan made model of him too. Have you seen that? Um, no, I haven't. It, it, it's it, it's not actually released, so it's not something you can download and like play around with, but it was like a render that I've seen on DeviantArt. This one looked like it could be an official render for one of the... Well, probably not up to the standard of the artwork nowadays for Mario games, but a few years ago that would have fit right in. Oh yeah, in like a 3D world, that could have totally worked. Yeah. I don't want the RPG characters to be in every main game. Not not time. all of them, but like where they fit, you know? Yeah, they should be something. I just think a lot of these characters, the RPGs make some of the best characters in my opinion, and it's a shame they don't ever get used for the, yeah. in any Mario games. Like, I remember getting trolled hard on Spanish Wikipedia of all things. I don't even really know Spanish. I used a translator for it, but basically, like, I was just messing around. I was in school, messing around. I, I decided to I look up Fawful on Wikipedia, and then I decided, I wonder if he has an article in other languages. So I looked him up on the Spanish Wikipedia, and I noticed there, in the timeline there, uh, it said Mario Kart 7. 
uh, I'm like, oh, well, hold the phone, hold the phone, what's this now, what's this now, and I translated it, and it said, Fawful appears as a playable character in Mario Kart 7. Oh my god. <laughs> I will never forgive that person who vandalized, and, and I saw it. <laughs> like, oh my... I was, I was genuinely excited, I just believed it. <laughs> I just believed it. It's so, like, easy to get excited about something like that. Because I, I, I knew that people could vandalize Wikipedia, but I always assumed that it gets reverted so instantaneously that I never expected to see it. The reason I brought up that Spanish Wikipedia thing, that was the first thing that gave me the idea that convinced me that Fawful could be in the Mario Kart games. Um, even though it was just a troll edit, it gave me the idea and I've never been able to tell myself that that's not a good idea. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good idea, it is. Like, I don't I, think... I know, it, I think it's an amazing idea. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I think that it should, and definitely could. It's not out of the question in the slightest. In the Bouncer's Inside Story remake, in the credits, they don't list that voice actor that they listed that it's assumed to be Fawful's voice actor from the original, Nami Funashima. I probably butchered that a lot. <laughs> that, that person's name that is not in the credits of the remake. Yeah. And I thought that was really weird, because Fawful clearly has the same voice clips. They made them higher quality, because they probably had the original assets, so they're not DS compression or anything, at least as much. They sound better quality in the remake to me. Why would they take that out? I don't know. Unless unless we were just wrong about that being Fawful's voice all, all along, and that they did something else, God knows what, but I, I honestly... Just kind of took it as fact that that was Fawful's voice because that's the only voice actor other than the usual like Charles Martinet, Kenny James for Bowser and, and stuff. And by the way, yeah. I wonder if there's going to be any Mario references, Mario RPG references, Mario Luigi references. That's probably not. But I just yeah, keep thinking right. to myself in the uh, in the, um, the you know if you heard that they're making a Mario movie, Illumination Entertainment's making this Mario movie. I did hear about that. Yeah. I'm just thinking constantly. I hope there's RPG references in it, because I think the RPGs are so much more material for a movie than in the, like, the main series. Yeah, I, they definitely should be able to do something like that. Yeah, um, like... Now, now, will they? I don't know, but... I, I don't, I, really I don't see that happening, unless it's, for, it's from, like, uh, the, the guys at Illumination would want to, maybe, if they happen to play the games and like them. But I don't see Miyamoto making a decision like that. Yeah, and also the movie's going to be so mainstream that they're probably only going to put like the characters everybody knows, like Mario, Peach, Bowser. Peach. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, um, whether, regardless of your opinion on these movies, because I know they're, a lot, they're pretty controversial, but Illumination's adaptations so far, doc, like for the Dr. Seuss ones, they've had some new characters. So I wonder if this is going to add some new, any new characters. Yeah, or maybe a new plotline, something like that. Oh god, I hope it's not just Bowser kidnaps Peach and Mario goes to rescue. I hope that's not that. I, I hope there's more to yeah. it than that. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. I wonder like if that. they got going to have Charles Martinet, or if they're going to have someone else. I, I don't know, because I they're going to have a full speaking Bowser, you know. So. Yeah, like, I hope, are they gonna bring in Kenny James? Like, I, I hope, I want to hear the their official voice actors do full lines, like, that would be amazing. And, and yeah, even, or, though, even though it would be a very delicate thing to try, because, you know, Mario Sunshine, that, that's kind of become, like, oh, a, a meme, meme thing now, because of how weird some of the voice acting was in it. But, yeah, that was, that was weird. But, I mean, I, if it could be done right. I think it could be. You no, know, there's also a chance that maybe it'll go with full, like, just ordinary voice. Like, Mario has maybe a slight Italian accent, but other than that, it's just a normal voice. Bowser's just someone with the deep voice. You never know. What yeah, it could be. Like, I, I always think, like, if they, if they had some of the... Uh, Mario and Luigi characters in there like what kind of voice actors would they would they have like I actually don't know that many mainstream actors by name so so I, I would have trouble coming up with ideas for them but like it, it would be interesting to hear some of these characters with full lines you know 
totally off topic and never gonna happen. But if Danny DeVito played Fawful, I think oh, he'd play oh Lord, oh Lord! I heard someone to, someone on Twitter said that they hoped he would voice Wario. But, um, the, 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 the Danny DeVito was I think considered to be Mario in the live action movie. Really? Yeah, I mean, I he didn't see. he didn't want the role, but they 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 initially wanted him for it. I mean, I could see that honestly. <laughs> like that that would have been really funny. But um, as, as it stands, I think Bob Hoskins said that that was like his least favorite thing he ever did or something. <laughs> but that's kind of off topic to like Mario and Luigi. So uh, we mentioned Wario and Waluigi and stuff. Like, uh, well, maybe I guess some other ideas like Peach and Daisy. I, I'm not big on Daisy though. Like, um, oh, but I, like, I hate Daisy. Yeah, I, I, I don't hate her as much as I used to, but I don't like her. Like, I, I, I think she was not a good choice for Smash. But, um, I've accepted it, I'm not gonna complain about that anymore, but... I, yeah, I mean, I don't hate her, hate her, but she's definitely, like, not a character I really enjoy. But I don't mind her. Honestly, but I wouldn't mind having, like, a, a, a playable role for, like, Peach in a Mario & Luigi game, but since she's not, like, big and heavy like Bowser, like, she would probably need a partner, so... I, I don't know who, who I would use for that. Most people would probably immediately be like, Daisy, Daisy, but no, I'm not really big on Daisy. Well, one thing I think is interesting is, like, the Mario and Luigi games have, don't get me wrong, they have great stories, I love them. But also, Peach always does yes. in some way end up getting kidnapped. I, I don't understand their, their fetish with that. I don't understand why, why is this a thing. Like, um... They don't always have to make her get kidnapped. Someone brought this up on GameFAQs the other day. They they made a topic saying the the subplot with Peach seems very weak, and they went on to say how this story was going well, and then and then all of a sudden it's oh by the way, Fawful needs Peach because she's the only one that can awaken the Dark Star, and like why why is this always in every game? Why does this happen? Yeah, she's always kidnapped, so and, and thinking... she's always the one person that is needed for some some powerful thing or something. In in yeah. the Thousand Year Door, she was the only person who could open the chest. <laughs> and the only person who could be like the host for the Shadow Queen. In in Superstar Saga, she's the only one that can awaken the Bean Star. Yeah, I feel like they just go way too hard on that. But <laughs> I, I'd thinking, like a game where she's just not kidnapped at all. That's what I'm saying. Instead of having her kidnapped, have her be a playable character in the next game. Yeah. And maybe saving something else. Or maybe not even saving anyone. Just trying to fight off Fawful or whoever the next main villain. Yeah, you don't need to have someone kidnapped to have a, a reason to play. Like you can have like, oh, if, if if the villain wins, you know, everyone's gonna be enslaved and or killed or something, and that's reason enough to go on your adventure and try to stop the villain. Yeah, like instead of kidnapping someone specific, they just take over the entire town somehow. Yeah, like they've, had, they've had plots like that. The the Shroobs pretty much had that going on, but then they had to kidnap Peach. So, of course, yeah. If they stopped using that constant formula of kidnap Peach, kidnap Peach, it has to happen. I think they can really open up possibilities for new ideas and better ideas. Exactly. Uh, but I just feel like there's this... Something behind the scenes going on where that's a rule that they have to incorporate that somewhere. Otherwise, they wouldn't find a, some way to make it happen every time. Like, even, like, th there was actually a kind of a reason for it in Super Paper Mario, but I think Super is the closest we've had to a Mario RPG where she's not kidnapped. She's still kidnapped in the beginning, but she's rescued very early on, and she's playable from then on out. Uh, yeah. And, and of course, the two previous Paper Mario games, she was kidnapped the whole time, but she kind of helps you still throughout the way. Uh, but I just yes. want one where she's not kidnapped at all. <laughs> yeah, I agree. They should just stray totally away from that. And and oddly enough, Color Splash kind of made it look like she wasn't going to get kidnapped at the beginning because they, oh, there's already a conflict and Peach is right here with you. But that, yeah, that didn't last long. At, to no. nobody's surprise for that game because of how rooted in the main series it was. But Yeah, it was still a good game, but they couldn't resist going back to those mainstream ideas that they have with it. And I feel like there was a lot of interesting concept art for that game that really should have made it in there, like, there was a design that looked like a Dupla Ghost. He was an early design for the rock-paper-wizard toad guy, and he's still a toad, 
because the designs show that there's a toad under the under the sheet. But it's just yeah. nice that they had reference to, to the early paper. That totally looks like something from the old Paper Mario games. Yeah, I totally agree. That would be that would be interesting to put in. They they had some concepts, but they probably got rid of them because uh, all, it's too devoid from the main series. But whatever, that's not Mario and Luigi. That's Paper Mario. But I mean, yeah. Um, but I think that the the what what they did to Paper Mario kind of did rub off on the Mario and Luigi series a little, especially with Paper Jam. Like they could have had this epic crossover, but the, it was just regular everything. Yeah, it's it's disappointing in some factors, but I also see like why they would do it sometimes too. Yeah, I see why. I see why. I, I totally understand limiting themselves, but not to the degree that they did. That's the thing. Like yeah, I feel like they didn't have to do it that mainstream. Yeah, because it got to the point where why is this even a crossover? Because like you you have all the bosses are like oh P D Piranha, uh, King Babom, King Boo. Uh, which, which which of these two series are these characters known for being in? Neither. They're known for the yep. main series. Like, yep. like they could have had um, bosses from the original Paper Mario as some of the paper bosses. They could have had, you know, recurring Mario and Luigi characters. Even if they didn't bring back Fawful, they could have had Popple. You know, they had Nabbit there, but why not Popple? He's a thief. He's from the Mario and Luigi series. Yeah, it was such a replacement of Popple. It's like, come on, just put Popple in. Exactly. And and he's never been in the Mushroom Kingdom before, so they could have even had a thing where, oh, he just escaped from Pillow Island because he got chased off by Wiggler, so his next target is the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, it's, that it's, could have made perfect I, sense. And, and the most baffling exclusion to me, well, there's actually two. One is Toadsworth. He's not from the RPGs, but he's pretty much a staple in the Mario and Luigi series, and he was just kind of yeah. gone in Paper Jam. I don't know why. But another one is the Elite Trio. Bowser was the okay. main villain. And they were last seen right with him at the end of Dream Team, but then they're just pff, gone. No no existing. For just exactly like, that one game. I feel like Paper Jam was kind of made... Now, I don't think this was the sole purpose, but kind of to introduce more mainstream players into the RPG universe. So they didn't throw too many new characters at them. But also, I feel like they didn't have to do it like that. They could have put more mainstream. Yeah, I mean, that's that's exactly. I just I just feel like um, it was such a tease of a cross. Yeah. You had the crossover, but you don't have any of the reasons the crossover would be amazing, <laughs> or most of them. Like to me, anyway. Because yeah, even just, even when, even when I was younger, I was always fantasizing and drawing up pictures of potential. Oh, Mario and Luigi paper collide with uh, Dementio coming out, coming coming in and brainwashing people, and Fawful teaming up with them. But they eventually fight each other, and like, oh god, oh my god, why couldn't they have something like that? I know why they couldn't go all out, but like, you should have yeah, had some fan was... service in there. This should have been fan service. Yeah, that's one thing they're lacking to their main hardcore supporters of the RPG games. They just kind of don't listen to them anymore as much as they should. They still do listen, but they should listen more. Yeah, and, and someone might, might could say, oh, but Paper Mario doesn't have as many recurring original characters as Mario and Luigi does, but they kind of still had cameos from some of the old partners in Thousand Year Door and cards of all of them in Super, and of course they had Merlin in all of them, so they could have done something. They could have brought some in some characters. Uh, of course, Starlo is not a good sole representative of the entire Mario and Luigi universe. Yeah. I mean, I love Starlo, but there's better characters out there. And also, Paper yeah. Jam was overall a Mario and Luigi game. It had Paper Mario in it, but it was a Mario and Luigi game at its core. But it's it didn't have any of the characters. Like, I don't understand. Uh, it's Starlo. The funny thing is, they even mention Starlo's origins. They mention the star sprites in Paper Jam. There's a typo there where they say Star Spirits, <laughs> which is Wait, really? actually yeah, kind of amusing. Oh um, I, it was a while ago that I saw it, but I swear I saw it. Um, like, <laughs> that's kind of coincidentally, a, a very coincidental typo considering the theme of the game. They have Paper Mario in there, but <laughs> yeah, that, that was actually kind of funny. And, and, yeah. and of course, when I first saw it, I'm like... <gasps> They tried so hard to not reference anything from the old Paper Mario games, but they failed. <laughs> that, that was that was that was kind of amusing, but uh, yeah, amusing for sure. 
And another thing I didn't really like about Paper Jam is Paper Bowser. Like, don't get me wrong, I, 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 I would have been fine with the Bowsers as the main villains if you st also had some of the other villains in the series running around as, like, side villains and stuff. But the thing that bugged me about the way Paper Bowser particularly was portrayed, he did talk, thankfully, unlike Sticker Star, but he was just a copy of Mario and Luigi Bowser. In the Paper Mario series, Bowser has kind of been portrayed a little bit differently, so I kind of was hoping that the, the, their different portrayals between the two series would, would be brought out here. But they just made them copies of each other in terms of personality and the way they talk and everything. Yeah, they were 100% the same. And I did kind of like the banter between them because of that, but yeah. they should have added more Paper but, Mario aspects into it to make them a little bit And Paper Luigi. Paper Luigi. Why did they make him only a cameo in the sound test? Because like, they hate Luigi. Like, he didn't have to be playable, even though that would have been really nice, but he could have been an NPC. He, you could have talked to him and had, like, some sort of way to highlight the way, oh, Paper Luigi is this really talkative character, and then Luigi only has voice clips, and he's like, ah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That would have been cool. And, like, not saying, like, similar to Popple, but he could have came in, like, the same consistency as Popple. Like, you're just going yeah. through your story, and you see Paper Luigi, and you have a brief encounter with him. He gives you a quest or whatever. Yeah, kind of just like, just kind of like in, in the Thousand Year Door, you, you would find him around and he tells you about his adventure. And that kind of reminds me of an idea This that if they if they were to do a Paper Mario remake in the same style as the recent Mario and Luigi remakes with an extra mode and everything, Thousand Year Door plus Paper Luigi's Marvelous Compass would be amazing. <laughs> that, would, that would be really, really cool. But it's, 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 it's kind of the same idea, like you have this adventure that a side character is going on while uh, Mario and co are doing their adventure, uh, and of course Luigi isn't with Mario in the Paper Mario games, except in, in Super, but like, so it, it, it could really work, and I'd like to see Luigi, like, as, as a soul, like, alone, on his own, in, in like a traditional Paper Mario kind of style, but, uh, but that's, yeah, but, yeah. I'd like to see I'd like to see a Paper Mario remake, too. Yeah, sadly, I doubt that's ever happening. Like, they, they've made it pretty clear that that that, uh, that Paper Mario is, is not going to have characters again and whatnot. And, and at least, it's a, unless something major changes. But I did see a video recently. Have you ever watched the channel Blocked Content? Uh, no, haven't heard of them. Uh, well, you could look it up later or something. But they, did, they released a video on a... Um, a potential leak. Now, there, this was not sourced, so I'm I'm pretty much think it's fake. It's got to be fake. It's way too good to be true, too. But basically, they said, "Oh, there's going to be a Paper Mario game on the Switch. All the partners are going to come back, um, and the, and it's going to be like like Mario and Rabbits, where where it, that's the kind of battles it would have. And and you have all the partners at your disposal. You can arrange them and stuff. And there's going to be lore, and there's going to be different." plot lines that you can get that are even optional depending on who you have out and there's going to be expansion on the part this is so way too good to be true yeah and that's, like it and, great like come on there's yeah no like and then, and then the, but but before I, I was actually nervous about it because in the beginning he said and they they are still insisting on going the sticker star route with toads and stuff but then you go into talking about all this, and I'm like, that's nothing like Sticker Star. That's actually good. Yeah, that's creative. New. And then they said, oh, Bloomier and Timpani are going to be part of your party as well. They're going to come in. And I'm like, don't tease me, dude. I know that's not real. Don't tease me. But, yeah, I don't know. that. If that somehow does come true, then um, then I'm, I'm probably... I'm probably going to be living in a mansion before that happens, but <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at these pictures and I'm like, one of these things is not like the others. One of these is an illegitimate choice for Smash and the others are not. <laughs> yeah, like I could totally see Flop in it. Bro came it down. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, Starlow, maybe. Eh, assist we'll trophy. Probably a better assist trophy than a playable character for Starlow. Yeah, that'd be cool. But Broke Madama, I <laughs> like what? I mean, that's such a random, random idea. Like that's so random. But uh, Broke Monsieur would probably still be a better choice because he's more prominent. But still, not even him. Like yeah, that's like saying um, 
let's take uh let's take actually this would be something really cool um i don't know if it's Bragi or Brogi, but you know who i'm talking about yeah right? the dog yeah what about that as an assist trophy in smash that'd be really cool yeah that would be awesome because because like he has attacks that he uses both in the battle against him but th that was kind of a tutorial battle but when bowser uses him as a as a brawl attack that that yeah. that there's and then and when he comes in as an assist trophy. Then the blitties could follow him. Yeah, you could have him like just charge at someone, and then um, all the little blitties are like jumping too, or like maybe all the blitties are jumping first. Then he comes in for like the final hit, then the other one or something. Yeah, like th there's a lot they could do with with if they if they actually had like things that impacted the gameplay more than a spirit, like as a like from the Mario and Luigi series. They should have a Mario and Luigi stage as well, in my opinion. Yeah, like, um, Bean Bean Kingdom, something like that. Yeah, and they should have it, like, rotate probably between locations from the whole series and make it be a lot oh, better exactly. better than the, the Paper Mario one. There is exactly one section in the Paper Mario stage that I thought was good. <laughs> the one that wasn't from Sticker Star. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know why... Like, they, they, they show the Sticker Star, because I still remember the Miiverse post when they first revealed that. And I, I saw it, it was the middle of the night, I shouldn't have even been awake, but I was just casually checking Mario boards and suddenly someone posted the pick of the day and I'm like, <gasps> and I immediately had to go to it and I'm like, please, please be something, please be a rotating stage with something other than Sticker Star in there. And then they showed the Flavio ship and I'm like, yes, I can't wait to see what the, they have in there from the original and Super Paper Mario, but nope, the, it was only one other section, it was also from Sticker Star. So... Why? Why do they have to keep, like, give us a little nostalgia, Nintendo. Stop bringing back Sticker Star. We don't like it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, and one section would have been fine if they had more from the other games, too. Like, the equal representation, I kind of understand that, but, yeah. like, giving the whole what? bias to that would be like, ugh. Like, the Bowser's Castle. Ba they, the Bowser's Castle could have been from the original Paper Mario. Not much would have even had to change. Yeah, just do the style of one from every game. It would have made so much more sense. Yeah, I think that should have been a Wii U stage anyway, not even a 3DS stage, because that series is mainly on consoles. But, um, they clearly wanted to wanted it there because they wanted Sticker Star to be the face of the series. That's why they probably did it, but... Uh, at least they got trophies of some of the characters in the older games in the Wii U version, but... Uh, you know what's weird? They, they've ne I've never seen trophies from the Mario and Luigi series in Smash. Yeah. I, that, I think it's probably because those characters are not canonically flat and they don't want to make new models. Mm -hmm. With Paper Mario, it's an easy shortcut. Oh, they're flat in canon, so we can just put artwork there and make it turn flat. It's easy. Yeah. But with Mario and Luigi characters, they'd probably need to make new models, and they probably didn't want to. Yeah, because it's too much work. Yeah, but the thing is, Smash Bros. Melee had a lot of new models for just trophies. They had some yeah. high-quality models of, like, the N64-era versions of characters like Waluigi. Like, yeah, although, at the same time, they did put a lot of work in Smash Ultimate, so they probably didn't want to have to yeah, add anything yeah, else that yeah. they didn't. So it was such a big project. Yeah, indeed. Indeed it was. You saying about how they want a uh, sticker star uh, as the face of their franchise is still sitting so bad on me. Oh god, yeah, I under I totally know. I know the feeling. Like I the first time I was like brute about that is when they actually had to Did you ever read the I Wanna Ask interview about Sticker Star? Um I might have a while ago, but it's been a while since so They basically the say so. at one point in there we worked hard to make make this the new standard for future games in the series, so please enjoy it to the fullest. Yeah, we decided to take our standard, make the game look a little better, but then everything else, it just went horrible. We just brought it down to the worst possible standard that we could. Yeah, And, and now there... this is what you get. Enjoy it. Or else. You know, I was honestly a little bit more hopeful during Color Splash, be as especially after they said, oh, we started making it right after Sticker Star finished, so they wouldn't have had much of a chance to see the backlash before they already decided on most of the game. So that, that would at least be more understandable. So I was like, okay, okay, cut this one some slack. The next game is going to be a lot better. Until December came of that year. 
and I saw the Game Informer interview, and it's like, oh, oh, he still is clearly talking like they have no intent of bringing back characters. And <laughs> oh God. May I have hope for the next uh, Paper Mario game. I have hope that they'll do something good with it. Yeah, I, I, I they, they did say that they probably weren't going to go with the same exact gameplay style from Color Splash, but. They did also imply that they had no desire to bring back any original characters and stuff, and that just really kills it for me. The characters are a big part of the Mario RPGs for me, so... Now, maybe if they want to make new ones or something, but... Is there anything else we should touch on, or should we try to make some sort of outro? I think I think we've pretty much covered what we need to be covering, so, uh... Yeah, I, th I think we should maybe wrap it up. You want to tell them where they can find you? Yeah, so I have my channel link in the description if you want to find my channel down there it's all down there have a bunch of stuff there some fossil related stuff hopefully going to be coming out with new videos soon so please if you enjoyed my voice go subscribe yeah y'all should definitely go check him out because i really enjoyed doing this collaboration and it's always nice to promote fellow fossil fans so yeah and also what's your favorite mario and luigi game why don't you let us know that in the comments and what you thought of this video and I guess we'll catch you next time. See you later, guys. Peace out. Bye.